I guess they didn't ask anybody else. <laughs> and there's plenty of us about now. Next year, I'm sure there'll be uh, more. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'd like to think that the best people are going to be nominated. I wouldn't like to make a distinction, you know? They'll, I'll be there next year. <laughs> Well, Poldark is set in Cornwall, which is in the extreme west of England, and it has a sort of Celtic feel to it. You know, it shares a culture with Scotland and Wales and Ireland. So there was something of that uh, folk music that I wanted to bring to it. So I used a slightly sort of modal style based on folk music. Um, I used a solo violin. Uh, I got to work with a really good friend of mine, Chris Garrick, who's a wonderful violinist, and I've been looking to work with him for years, so this was the perfect opportunity. And I just loved the story. I thought the story was romantic and historically interesting and involving, and the, the characters were just really real, and um, I just loved the series. I've just actually started on the second series, where we're going to do another 10 episodes. So I have to love it because it takes up half of my year. <laughs> and I do love it. In practical terms, I think uh, American television probably has bigger budgets, so you can afford more musicians. But I mean, I don't think it's the fact that it's America versus Britain. I think it's, you would do a different score depending on the genre of the score. And uh, Tenth Kingdom was a very, um, fantastical world that we had to create and it was a very big epic feel to it um, something like Poldark although it has a certain amount of epicness about it it's much more intimate it's uh, it's really a sort of it's, it's based on the relationship between characters it's always a battle it's always a battle um, yeah. You have to adapt and adopt. I mean, yes, I'd like more time, I'd like more musicians, but you know, when we don't live in a perfect world, we have to do the best we can with the resources that we get. And Paul Duck has a fairly good budget, really. I, I don't think you can cut too many corners in Paul Duck. There's, you, you can see the quality in every aspect of the production, the costumes and the design and everything. <laughs> it's the one I'm doing at the moment, I guess, because I, I, I think I'm very lucky because I do get a wide variety of work to do and I love to do variety. I don't like to repeat myself. I suppose the genre that I feel most at home in is this sort of romantic drama, something that you can afford to write a tune for. I love to write a tune. Uh, I love melody. I love lovely harmonies. Electronic scores, scores are great, and I love experimenting with sounds as well, but I like to have the opportunity to really get something emotional. I don't know, because when I go into colleges, the balance between men and women is more or less equal. I guess it's going to change, it'll take time to change. Um, Certainly, film music is getting more technical. You have to be very adept in a studio. Maybe that puts some women off. I don't know. Um, I hope not, because although the technology is complicated, it's probably easier than it was when I started to get to grips with things. Um, it's, it's not something, you know, I don't spend my life beating myself up because I'm a <laughs> female composer. Uh, if it's something that's not electronic, something that's going to be orchestral, I always start on the piano because to me my piano is my orchestra palette. I can play something and I'm thinking actually that would be great on a French horn and this is where we have the cellos and, and in my head it's already being scored. Um, and then I like to actually write in pencil on paper. And I thought I was terribly old fashioned doing that but then I found that a composer that I admire hugely Vince Mendoza, the American composer, he does the same thing. And um, 
lots of composers, it now comes, you know, you know, I talk to them about it. I say, do you write in pencil? And they say, yeah, I like to, yeah. So I think there's still a few of us left who like to do that. I just, I'm very, very quick writing in pencil. And if I wrote on a computer, I think I'd get, it would slow me down. Well, uh, I, I have a very good assistant that works with me and he does mock-ups for me, but I don't think it's good enough coming out of Sibelius. You have to work very hard to make a mock-up sound good. And it's not something that I'm particularly interested in spending a lot of time on. And there's people who are better at it than I am, including my wonderful assistant, Aaron. Um, so yeah, I think that'll have to continue to happen. Not usually, not usually because um, they inevitably colour the way that you think about something. I recently finished a film with Paul Verhoeven called Elle, a French film, and he used no temp track at all. And uh, it was very liberating because we started with a clean slate and we could sort of you know, we could invent the world that we wanted to invent without being tied to anything that anybody particularly was falling in love with. I like to see something. I'm, I'm very influenced by the visual aspect of things. I read scripts, but it's not... Until I can see the characters and the production design and the lighting and the whole way, the pacing of it, I don't really like to start. A good challenge. A good challenge is doing something really quickly, and I quite like it because I did a BBC TV thing, and I had literally, I think I got the final cut on Saturday morning, and I recorded the score on Tuesday, and that was about 25 minutes of music. And I'm not kidding, cranky, that was hard, but I really sort of enjoyed it. And in the studio, you know, I. It, it, it all felt very sort of alive and current, you know, there was a sort of excitement to it. I don't want to do that all the time though. <laughs> uh, it was a film called The Boy in a Dress. Well, the film... <clears throat> I recently watched a film that didn't have any music. It was a film called 45 Years, which is been highly regarded and Charlotte Rampling has been nominated for various things but I thought they really missed they really missed a trick not putting a score on it because it didn't I thought it was boring really it there was nothing to really carry me through there was no nothing to help the development of the plot there was no theme obviously and so I think music can do so much to a film and you only realize that when you when you don't have one. Um, the music is giving you the sort of emotional intensity, the emotional sort of inner, inner message of the film. It's interesting because this film I've just done with Paul Verhoeven, it's, it's about two hours long and I just saw the cue sheet and I wrote about 46 minutes. Now, if it was a Hollywood film in a, in a, and it was two hours long, it would be like more like one hour, 40 minutes. And I think um, with, we were trying to do something different. When, whenever we had the music, it was trying to say something. It had a meaning to be there. And I think sometimes in Hollywood films, the music sort of becomes part of the sound effects. And it's sort of there, and it's not very loud, and it's just droning on, really. And I don't like it, because I think <clears throat> you, lose, you lose the magic that you can get when you're in the middle of a scene, you bring in the music, and the music just heightens that moment. But if the music's there all the time, you can never do that. So, I, I don't know. Um, sometimes I've done films with lots and lots of music, but... Um, if you left it to me, I would probably do less than was in a lot of Hollywood films. Sometimes I'm listening to a hot, hot film and I'm saying, why is the music here? You know, it doesn't seem to be doing anything.
I think it's a very admirable idea. I think it's been a very elegant evening, very nicely done, very classy, and I really hope so. Um, one would love to see more, more events like this. Okay, thank you.